Welcome to the Gamescape, everybody. My name is Jarek, and today we're back in Phoenix Point. This is going to be our training video on mutations. So in this video, we are going to go ahead and take a look at all the different mutations. We're going to talk about what it takes to get them, uh, what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are. And then we're going to take a look at some, some ideas that you can do with the mutations. So getting right into it, we are here in my test game. And as you can see from the interface, if you took a real quick look at it, you'll notice this is not a real game. I've basically started up a game on Legend difficulty, immediately granted myself all of the re research. And we're here with everything ready to go and all set. So first thing with mutations, you need to research in order to get it, the mutation technology research from the Disciples of Anutri, which we have since I've given myself all of the research. So that's done. The next thing that you need is you need to have a mutation lab. Mutation labs are 250 materials and 75 tech to build. I have instant build turned on in this game, so it's just going to pop in. We don't have to wait for it to build. It takes about three days or so for it to build in a normal game. Once that's done, you can go to your personnel and you can come in here to edit the unit and you now have this mutate button. So let's go ahead and jump into these and let's start talking a little bit about advantages. The advantages of the mutations are they cost mutagens instead of otherwise equipping armor pieces to your soldiers, which would cost materials and tech. So you're you're helping your basic economy a little bit by using your mutations, protecting your soldiers without having to spend money on gear for them. The next thing that they give you is they give you some useful abilities for your soldiers that they don't normally have access to. And, and what those abilities are varies per individual piece. And we'll talk about those here in just a minute as we go over each of the other pieces. And the third thing is when you do a mutation, it's done instantly. There's no waiting like you have to wait to build a piece of equipment. It's just done and your soldier is ready to go out in the field uh, right away. So there's no no waiting and everything's all set. So if you had to get a, a new soldier up and running in a hurry, you had some spare mutagens laying around, you could do uh, two mutations. Now you are limited to two. You can't do all three body parts. And so that's a small limitation on this. It's not the end of the world. Interestingly enough, you can also do one mutation and one uh, bionic update or bionic augmentation as well. And I'm not going to talk about the bionics today. I'll do another video on those, but just be aware that you can mix them, but you're still limited to two, right? You can't do two mutations and then a bionic head, for instance, uh, that doesn't work. You just total of two augments on your soldiers. Some of the drawbacks of the mutations. Uh, first of all, there's no going back. Once you mutate something, it's mutated. You can't go back to having it be normal. Now you can mutate something and then change it to something else, right? So if we mutate this guy's head, he's now got that head. We decide we don't like that. We can change it to this other head. We decide we don't like that. We can change it to this other head, but you can't go back once it's mutated. You can't go back to having a human head. Now it does cost mutagens every time you change it as well, of course. So you do want to be careful about that, but you are at least not stuck with the one mutation that you've already picked. If you make a mistake or if you decide later on that your soldier's evolving and it could really use instead of stompy legs, it could use shadow legs, then you can certainly make those changes as long as you have the mutagens to do it. The other thing that you're giving up is you're giving up the ability to have mounted equipment in the body parts that you mutate. So that's not always weapons either, right? So you're giving up, for instance, with the armored head or with any head mutation, you're not going to be able to have the, the mist repeller, for instance, or you're not going to have the motion detection module. If you mutate the torso, you're not going to be able to have any of the vests that protect your soldier, you know, blast vest or poison vest or whatever. And the legs, you're not going to be able to get the goo repeller modules if you mutate your legs. So that's a trade off that you're making with the mutations. Um, the mutations do tend to be very slightly better or at least offer some benefit over the equipment that you would normally put on that particular body part in most cases. So, for instance, uh, well, you know, let's just go start going over these. So let me grab a different soldier here so we can kind of see everything that's going on. So let's start with the heads. 
Um, the first head that you're going to get, and, and each one of these columns opens up with a different mutation technology. So when you first research uh, mutation technology from the Disciples of Anu, you're only going to have this first column available to you. And then when you eventually get advanced mutation technologies, the second column opens up and ultimate technology opens up the third column. So let's uh, let's take a look at each one. So the armored head here uh, is decent. It gives you good armor protection at 30. That's solid medium armor up into the low heavy range. Uh, it gives you minus four perception, which isn't a big deal. Small stealth hit as well, minus five percent. Little accuracy hit as well uh, and weight of one. So the really nice thing though that this gives you is immunity to days and as that if that especially comes into play well with the berserkers which we'll talk about later uh but it's a it's a decent ability to not be able to be dazed the next head is the perceptor head this one is basically a slightly upgraded acheron sniper helmet from the synedrian faction so you have one extra point of armor at 15 instead of 14. you have extra perception at plus 14 the acheron helmet gives you plus seven and you have the plus five stealth and the plus 10 accuracy that you have that's also granted by the acheron helmet so this particular head i'm not super excited about you know you're, you're giving up you're giving up the flexibility of having another helmet or being able to change to a different helmet for one extra armor and uh seven extra perception perception it has a couple of decent uses in this game. You know, obviously it lets you spot things farther away. It also, for your assault soldiers, affects the range that you can return fire if they have the return fire ability. So extra perception isn't a bad thing, but I don't know if it's worth the permanence of having a mutated head. That's something you're going to have to decide for yourself. Uh, you could just put an Acheron helmet on this guy and have just about the same thing. So up to you but that's kind of my thoughts on it. It's not bad. I put Acheron helmets on a lot of my soldiers because they are quite good. I don't know if it's worth having the trade-off of not being able to put a mount on the helmet by having the mutated head. The third head that is available is the resistor head. This one gives you 20 armor, which is basically, this is basically an, an Odin helmet. Same thing, 20 armor, no other, no other frills. Uh, it does, however, grant you poison resistance and virus resistance. One of the things that is not listed here, even here in the text, oh, it is in the text, but it's wrong. So the text here says that you get poison resistance, poison and virus resistance while increasing willpower by five. It's no longer five. It's only plus two now. And so you're going to want to be aware of that. Similarly, the armored head here grants you a plus one in strength, which is not listed, but it does. Uh, there is a plus one strength to your soldier when you get the mutated head. So that's kind of a thing. And we're, we're going to I'm going to cover all of these that I know above, because there are several places where the text is either wrong or missing information in this. So I'll, I'll let you know kind of what's what when I get to each individual piece. So anyway, the resistor head is uh, basically gives you the virus and the poison resistance and the plus two to your willpower. Other than that, it's an Odin helmet and there's nothing else too much special about it. Um, one bug that I found, and I don't, uh, I don't know how much common knowledge this is, but you probably, if you haven't played the game much, you're not going to run into this. There is a technology that you can get from New Jericho late in the game. It's called Project Hecate. And what Project Hecate does is it gives all of your soldiers immune uh, resistance to virus, which means, uh, and resistance means you take half, half virus, right? The bug is that once you research Project Hecate, any soldier you have that would have already had virus resistance no longer has it. And so that's something else to kind of be aware of. If you have a guy out there with a resistor head, once you re research Project Hecate, you're not going to have virus resistance on that guy anymore. It's a bug. It's not supposed to be that way, uh, but it seems like it's instead of setting it to, you know, setting virus resistance to on, it seems like it's just flipping it to, you know, the opposite of what it already is, which is incorrect, but it's how it is. So just be aware of that. There are also three heads here that are specific to the priests. Only priests can have these uh, lower three head mutations. The first one is the Synod head, and this gives you 12 armor, minus 10 stealth. It's big, it's tall, and easy to hit. 
which is another disadvantage to these priest heads, especially in the higher level difficulties when the Pandorans are mostly taking headshots or trying to take headshots. You get these bigger heads out there, it's a bigger target for them to hit. The advantage to this is the Radiant Hope ability. And what that does is all allied units within seven tiles recover two action, two will points, sorry, at the start of the turn. And so that's a way that you can keep your soldiers will points up a little bit. It's not much, plus two per turn isn't a ton, but it's something, right? And so if the priest that has this head is also using mind control, most of the time, depending on what you've mind controlled, it costs two, one or two will points per turn to maintain that mind control. So in that regard, you're getting the free mind control upkeep. Uh, now, not everything is that. Some things that are bigger things that you mind control cost more than that per turn. But a lot of the normal size stuff like Tritons and Arthrons and humans and stuff like that uh, cost either one or two will points per turn to maintain the mind control. And this basically gives you that per turn. So it's something that you can use. This is not the best of the priest heads by far, but it's it's not horrible either. None of them are horrible. All of them have their utility. The second one is the judgment head. Now this one you could argue is the best one. Uh, armor's 25, which is pretty good. Gives you minus 10 stealth. Gives you plus 7% to your accuracy, which is a nice boost. Uh, it's not the Acheron helmet boost, but it's still pretty good. The ability that this head gives you is the Instill Frenzy ability, which is a really, really nice ability too. Basically what it is, is you spend four will points and an action point, and every one of your allies that's within 20 tiles, for two turns, they get their, incre their speed increased by 50%, and they become immune to panic. Now, that's basically the equivalent of everybody getting dash and being able to use it for free for two turns uh, twice. And so it's a big, big speed increase to your team. Uh, it does not, however, affect this priest. Uh, so the, the person using and still frenzy doesn't get to benefit from it, but everybody else on the team does. So that's a really, really nice ability. And one of the things that makes this judgment head really great. What's not listed here on this one is it also increases your will points by eight. Plus eight willpower is huge. That's a lot of extra willpower. If you only have one priest, this is probably the head that you want to have it on because the extra eight willpower makes your priest's abilities much, much more usable against Pandorans who also have high amounts of will points, which is most of them. And then the last head is the screaming head. Uh, again, 12 armor, not very good protection, minus 10 stealth because it's big. And this one gives you, however, the Psychic Scream ability. Now, the Psychic Scream ability is actually quite good. For one action point and four will points of your own, you can activate this. And what it does is it causes a minus 10 will point damage to all enemies within eight tiles of you. So you can really take down the will, po the will points of the enemy quickly with this Psychic Scream. Now, it is only usable once per turn. You cannot do more than one Psychic Scream per turn, even if you have the action points and will points to do it. So keep that in mind too. But it, it really does help soften things up for the mind control if you're going for the mind control. So those are the priest heads. Oh, and this uh, particular screaming head also, uh, while it doesn't list it here, uh, grants an extra plus four will points to your, to your priest. Uh, this head doesn't give you a, a will point bonus. So none here, plus eight here, plus four here on these three heads. So to your will points. So those are just hidden things that you get. It, it, they're not listed in the descriptions or anything like that. So those are the heads. Let's talk about the body mutations. The first one is going to be the regeneration torso. The regeneration torso get, grants you really good armor protection at 34. This is the same as the Golem B heavy torso armor without the jump jets, basically. Uh, it gives you minus 10 stealth, minus 8% accuracy, which is, again, kind of in line, maybe slightly worse than the Golem B. But it does give you regeneration. The problem is, is they've nerfed it a little bit. So some of these texts still say 10 points to all injured body parts. It's not that anymore. It's only to arms and torso now. So if your head or your legs are disabled, the, the regen torso is not going to help fix that anymore. It used to back before they started rebalancing things. It no longer does. Uh, this torso also gives you fire resistance, which means you take half damage from fire, which can come up from time to time. Uh, this torso also, again, it's not listed here, but it does grant plus one strength to your soldier as well. 
The next torso is the tentacle torso. This would be useful for capturing if you had a soldier that you wanted to be a good capturing soldier. It's light armor, 16 armor, plus one speed, plus six perception, and it allows you to do a tentacle attack. The tentacle attack is two action points and three will points to activate. And what it does is it's a 10 damage with 40 pierce to get through armor. And if you do damage to the target, you do 24 paralysis damage to the target as well. Now that's a lot of paralysis. That is three hits from a, from a near razor or almost four hits. So that's three and a half hits from a Hera pistol. And so that's a decent amount for the two action points. It's good. It, it's a good amount of paralyzation for your action points, basically. Uh, you also have tentacle retaliation, which means if something else attacks you in melee, say an Arthron, for instance, comes up and swings at you with his claw, for three, if you have three will points, you're going to counterattack after his attack, and you'll hit him with the, you know, again, with the 10 points plus 40 pierce and the 24 paralysis damage. So he'll hit you once. Odds are good he's not going to hit you twice. At least two action points are going to be gone, most likely. He might lose three, or he might even just be fully paralyzed, depending on, on his strength and what type of Arthron or what other type of enemy it is. And then the last torso is the Venom torso. I want to like the Venom torso, but it's got big issues. Um, armor 20, uh, same as the same as the Odin armor. Plus two to speed, which is good. Uh, plus 10% to your stealth, which is decent. Plus 20 accuracy. Now you see that and you're like, that is really good. That's really good. The problem is you have to kind of look in the description. This kind of weird hand means you can no longer use two-handed weapons which means your plus 20 accuracy is only going to apply to handguns, which, okay, uh, not great. You know, it's like handguns have really poor effective range to begin with. The only handgun you really could maybe make this work with, well, I mean, any of them are decent, I guess, but they just don't do the damage that two-handed weapons do, right? So you're not going to get the damage output from a handgun that you're going to get from an assault rifle or from a sniper rifle, for instance. It also gives you this shoot, sp shoot spike attack. Now the poison spike is 55 damage plus 50 poison. Now that's a respectable amount of poison damage. That's better than the Sinedrian poison crossbow. It is one action point to activate it, has an effective range of 22 and has a total of 16 shots. So it is limited to how many times you can fire it. And obviously there's no way to reload it. Uh, so once you fire at your 16 poison uh, spikes, it's done. So again, if you need to really, really put a lot of poison damage on something big, this is a way to do it, right? So you're talking about, you know, if you need to get a, ha a spawnery in a lair poisoned quickly, or if you need to, you know, if you got, you're up against a big Scylla or something else that you need to do just tons and tons of damage to, stacking up that poison damage is a great way to do it. Unfortunately, this is a little bit niche and its, it's drawback of not being able to use two-handed weapons makes it not a great choice for a soldier who's in a normal combat situation most of the time. So I have mixed feelings on it. You can try it out if you, uh, in fact, I would encourage you to try it out. And then if you don't like it, like I said, you can always, you know, if you've got the mutagens, you can just mutate to the, you know, regeneration torso if you want or whatever. So those are the torsos. Next, we'll talk about the legs. The first ones you get are the stomper legs. These are actually quite good. 30 armor, heavy armor, minus one speed hit. Uh, but for just the minus, you know, the, the small price of the minus one speed, a little hit to your stealth and not being able to wear fashionable footwear ever again, you're picking up a massive 12% accuracy boost, which is aside from this torso that can't utilize it, 12% is the best in the game, I think. Um, these stompy legs will give you the 12%. There's also a bionic head that gives you 12%. I think everything else is 10% or less. And so that's a, that's a massive boost to your accuracy. Uh, and so you can, you can really utilize that on your snipers on, well, on any soldier really that has ranged attacks is going to, going to benefit from that. Now you do have the minus one speed that you have to mind. So, you know, you're not going to 
want to put these on a melee type that needs to get in close probably but really any soldier that's using ranged attacks could benefit from having these legs they're quite good they also do allow you to do a stomp attack which is a five tile radius it's one action point to activate it and it does 500 shot uh, sorry not 500 200 shock damage to everybody including friendlies within that five tile radius how shock damage works is if the shock damage is higher than the target's current hit points, they get dazed. Then a, a dazed creature has one action point, is reduced to one action point, and has a minus 50% accuracy penalty if they are able to use that one action point to fire a weapon. So pretty good, but beware of friendly fire because it does affect your own soldiers as well. But it's a good way to do a little bit of crowd control sometimes, especially if those targets have already been softened up a little bit by your other soldiers or even by yourself. You know, if you can shoot something and get a below 200 health and then you can stomp, you can get it to where it's not really a threat to you the next turn. The uh, stomper legs also add plus one strength, just like the other three other two pieces in this set. So you can get with the two mutations, you can get the plus two strength. It's not a problem uh, if you decide to go both ways. The next set of legs is the shadow legs. These are your stealth legs. So armor 12, pretty poor protection. No extra speed, but plus 30% stealth bonus. Now these are gonna be good for your infiltrators. 30% is better than the sticks leg armor that the inf infiltrator normally uses, which is only 20%. So with these legs and the rest of the sticks armor, your, your infiltrator is going to have a base stealth rating of 60% and then plus the 25% they get before they're discovered. So you're going to be looking at 85% stealth until they're discovered and then it drops to 60%. So pretty good. These also let you do a uh, electric kick, which is similar to the stomp in that it does daze, uh, it'll daze the target if it does the uh, enough shock damage. I believe the electric kick is also 200 uh, points of shock damage just the same as the stomp the difference is this is a targeted melee attack where this is an area of effect so uh, but either way they both kind of do the same thing uh, just this one is to a single target is all and then the last set of legs are the agile legs um, 10 armor really poor protection really poor uh, but plus four to your speed this i think is the biggest speed boost in the game uh, for a single piece of equipment uh, also gives you immunity to goo that comes into effect later in the game when you have Acherons and Silas spitting goo around and trapping your guys. Uh, these guys will be able to just ignore that. So it's a small extra thing. It's okay. It's not the best thing. Again, all of this stuff, you have to decide for yourself if these advantages and disadvantages are worth taking. A lot of times, some of them aren't going to be, right? So you might not ever have a need for just having plus four speed, but really poor protection and immunity to goo. I don't know. Depends on your soldiers and how you've kitted them out, how you've designed them, how they fight, how you fight with them. Uh, all those things kind of coming into, coming into play. So the last thing I want to talk about is when and why you would want to use some mutations to get some special stuff going on. The first one I mentioned was the armored head and it's day's immunity and that goes really well with the berserker class at at level seven the berserker gains the ability adrenaline rush what adrenaline rush does is when you activate it every action you take costs one point one action point with the caveat that at the end of the turn that soldier is dazed the next turn which again you're if you're dazed you get you're down to one action point and you're you have a 50 percent accuracy penalty since somebody with this head mutation can't be dazed then that no longer applies to that particular berserker so that berserker becomes a berserker in the truest sense of the word where he can continue to activate adrenaline rush turn after turn after turn and getting all of those uh attacks at one action point and if you start cross-classing that with something else like even like a heavy that's four shots with a heavy weapon every turn if you if you don't want to move or you know move a bit in three shots or or you know whatever you want the other thing that it allows the berserker to do is with its last action point it can use the recover action which is normally a four point ability and it gains back half of its will points so this head on a Berserker that's a level 7 Berserker with that Adrenaline Rush is extremely powerful. 
Now, it's is it the best mutation in the game? Uh, probably not. And it's not that useful outside of the Berserker class other than its heavy armor and an extra point of strength. But you boy, you get one of these on a, on a Berserker and that Berserker really is going to shine. So that's a great thing. The regen torso is really good for most of your troops. Uh, that plus 30, that 34 armor is really going to go a long way towards protecting them. And the regeneration in combat, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've lost a soldier on the first or second turn because their arm got disabled and now they can't fire their weapon anymore. You know, their two-handed weapon. And that is really aggravating. <laughs> uh when it happens because now you're you're effectively down a soldier at that point and it's not a hundred percent true but what they can do with one arm is pretty pretty limited unless you've packed a whole bunch of grenades and a handgun on them and even then you know a soldier that's not proficient with a handgun trying to run a handgun is not really any good unless they're like really close to the enemy which is tough to be sometimes so i do would encourage you to look at the regeneration torso on a lot of your on a lot of your soldiers if you've got the mutagens to do it and you're not using those mutagens for something else it's a great it's a great torso and the extra armor is going to do a lot to protect your soldier and keep him alive the regen is going to help keep him alive and it's just a great piece of equipment uh the stomper legs again uh for any of your ranged attackers the stomper legs uh, outside of the infiltrators i suppose because you don't want to take that stealth hit but outside of that all of your ranged attackers can benefit from these legs. That plus 12 accuracy bump is going to be enormous. Um, another thing that it can do is basically offset any accuracy penalties that you're taking for some of your traits. And there's one in particular that I'm thinking of. It's the reckless trait that your soldiers can get. I don't know if any of my guys actually have it. Let me check real quick and see here. Um, quarterback, no, not him. No, maybe no, that's cautious. That's the opposite. <laughs> Here it is, Reckless. So Reckless gives you a plus 10% bonus damage dealt and a minus 10% to your accuracy. And that's to everything. That's not to a specific weapon. That's every attack that you make is extra 10 damage, extra 10% damage rather, and a minus 10% accuracy. Well, if you're taking a minus 10% accuracy here, but you're gaining plus 12% accuracy for having the stomper legs, you're coming out ahead. Now, a lot of the equipment's going to give you more than the extra two, basically, that you're going to get. Because you're going to get 12 from the stomper legs, you're going to lose 10 from this. So you're netting plus 2% accuracy. Some of the armor pieces are going to do better than that. But overall, that's a nice trade. The extra 10% damage and you're not taking that huge hit on your accuracy, that's a really good trade-off. So if you've got a soldier with Reckless, really, really, really consider getting Reckless and then adding the Stomper legs to him to offset that, that penalty. You're going to be really happy. And then if you get lucky enough to get both Reckless and Cautious, which is the opposite, 20% bonus accuracy and minus 10 damage dealt, then you're going to be just swimming in accuracy because those two are going to offset each other. And they're basically, it's plus 20% for this and then minus 20% accuracy for the other one, or minus 10%. So you're net plus 10% accuracy there. And then another 10, another 12% accuracy for the legs. You're going to be, you're going to be shooting flies off a camel's back at that point. So it's going to be really nice. That's expensive. You know, 25 skill points a piece to buy these. You're looking at 50 skill points. If you're on the higher levels, that's a lot of skill points. So maybe you're not going to be able to do that, but regardless, you know, if you've got Reckless, consider Reckless plus Stomper Legs. That's going to be a really nice setup for you. Um, the rest of this stuff is is a little niche. Um, again, the Resistor Head, I don't know if it's worth it. I really don't. You know, the Poison and Virus Resistance are okay, but they're kind of edge case. You don't run into those a lot. There are several Tritons. You know, you're, you're going to be running into Triton ghouls that have the Redeemer rifles and are doing virus damage. And, and make no mistake, virus damage can shut your soldier down really fast and for a very long time while it's wearing off. So if, you're, if your soldier soaks up 15 virus damage from a burst from a Redeemer, he's going to be out of the fight for a good long time. So resistant, virus resistance is okay. Uh, there are ways later in the game to get rid of virus to med kits and such that can do it. So I don't know if the resistor head's really worth it. Uh, the perceptor head, again, 
it's an Acheron helmet that's slightly upgraded, but you're also again losing the head slot, the head mount slot. So I don't know. That's up to you if you want it. Great. If you don't, no problem. Uh, the tentacle torso, like I said, that one is is kind of specialized to a capturer. And so it, it's certainly not enough armor to be worth taking in any other situation. I don't think you're you're looking at fairly light armor here, not very good protection for the ability to do a lot of paralyzation damage. If you're not focusing on that, then definitely not the torso that you want. And the Venom Torso, again, I, I would love for this to be good. I really would, because I kind of like the idea of it. But it it's just, you're basically limiting your soldier to only using handguns. And the poison spikes aren't much better than a handgun, aside from the fact that you can really stack up a bunch of poison on something. The, the downside to the poison is, even if you kill the target with the poison... You don't get the will points back for doing it. You know, normally when you kill a target, you get the will points, you know, two or three will points for, for the kill. The poison damage takes effect on their turn. And so your soldier doesn't get counted as getting the kill. And so you're not you're not gaining that little benefit by killing it with poison. Again, on the big stuff like the spawneries and stuff, you stack up 400 poison on a spawnery and you're going to be able to just start making your way to the Ex, you know the, the extraction zone because in a few turns that spawnery is going to be dead from poisoning so if you wanted to specialize a soldier for doing lairs and killing spawneries or taking on big silas and stuff like that chirons whatever okay maybe that's a good use for this maybe but he is going to be pretty limited in other normal more normal aspects of fighting and and running missions because he just doesn't have the long range punch that even a uh, assault soldier is probably going to end up having. You can, I suppose, take this torso plus the stomper legs plus an Acheron helmet, and then you're running up to what is that? That's uh, 20, 32 plus 10, 42 plus 42 percent accuracy bonus, which would offset the offset the limited range of this thing a little bit. And it's not as bad as pistols are. I think the Hephaestus is slightly better uh, for its effective range, but the other two, the other three handguns are pretty, pretty bad. They're in the, you know, 14 to 20 range, I think. So it's slightly better than most of the handguns, but it's not exceptionally better. But yeah, if you wanted to stack up the extra, the extra pieces of gear or mutations in order to get up to a really, really high accuracy bonus, then this would be something you could consider as long as you're okay with just having that as your weapon and a handgun. So that's something else. The Nurgle's Wrath handgun at plus 42% accuracy might be decent, right? Because it's 100 damage and 10 shred for two action points. So it's maybe not the worst. It's it's better shred, not as good a damage as an assault rifle, assuming all your all your rounds hit. But I don't know. That's something you can experiment with. In fact, I encourage you to experiment with it. Shadow legs really great for your infiltrators. No problem there. Uh, no real drawbacks to these other than light armor, but your infiltrator's already wearing light armor. So you're actually probably coming out ahead with this. Plus you gain the electric kick, which is not usually very useful because most things have more than 200 hit points, but uh, it's situationally, it could be helpful. So, you know, at the very least, you're gaining the plus 10% stealth, which is what you want with your infiltrators anyway. So for your infiltrators, I, I would pretty highly recommend these as long as you've got the mutagens to do it. And then the agile legs again, they're, they are, they would be best for very specialized builds, like maybe your Terminator types and the the types that really need to move a long distance or really need to get into melee to be effective. And so that's going to be, again, pretty niche for these. And, and the 10 armor on them is just absolutely atrocious of protection. So I don't know. I don't know what, what I think about those. But again, if you need the speed, it's there. Plus four is a lot of extra speed. So use that if, if you've got a build for it. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. Kind of covered everything that I know about them. And I don't use them a lot myself, but that's just a play style choice for me. And uh, I, I actually kind of tend to use my mutagens more towards the mutoid soldiers is, is at this point myself. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with these things. You know, use them, love them. Uh, I think a lot of them are extremely useful for your soldiers. And so, you know, like I said, experiment, see what works for you. 
you know, take the stuff that isn't that great and see if you can make it work. That's always kind of a fun exercise if you're not playing a super serious game and uh, just uh, do what you can with them. So I hope I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do me a big favor, hit that like button for me. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. That really, really helps me out guys a lot. And uh, so we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.